A few months ago, the government of Congo has decided to toughen its control at the beach, the port of Brazzaville that links the country to GRC's capital Kinshasa via the Congo River. With new travel requirements, this measure had a major impact on the cross-border trade, a sector that was heavily dominated by disabled people who could travel from or to Kinshasa without paying taxes or custom fees. All they needed was an ID card. We, the disabled, are suffering. We can no longer travel because of this measure. Rosaline Kodia is a 41-year-old mother of six who used to cross the Congo River daily to buy goods from Kinshasa for herself and for the many able-bodied traders who found the crossing expensive and risky. She is now left with nothing and relies on the support of her friend Hortense, who used to do the crossing in addition to her job as a civil servant. I'm suffering a lot with my children. I'm a widow, so with my children it's very difficult. We cannot do trade here in Brazzaville because if I resell something about 10 pounds, I only make one pound profit. It's not working. And now to go to Kinshasa, they require a passport and a visa that costs 70 pounds. You also need an invitation letter that costs 50 pounds. For the blind people who used to do the cross-border trade, the situation is worse. At least we, the handicapped, can manage to find little things to do. But for blind people it's more difficult, because at the beach you can find all kinds of disabilities. They both explain how solitary it is for disabled to have an income in Congo. Since I've started working, I've noticed that people see me differently, and they respect me, especially in my family, as I am the eldest. People call me before they take decisions. When you earn money, you get more respect. That's how it is. By leading many disabled traders to inactivity, the situation at the beach has shed light on the amount of issues disabled people face in Congo. The number of the disabled population is unknown, although the government believes they represent approximately 10% of the population. And the law on disability voted in 1992 has never been implemented. The Ministry of Social Affairs, who is in charge of disability issues, hardly explains us why. This law has not been implemented, but we do apply it in practice. He points out the efforts the government makes to employ some disabled. The state still recruits with no discrimination. In the civil service, we have 10% quota on all recruitments. He introduces two disabled men who work with him as part of this 10% quota. When he leaves the room, they explain how hard it was for them to complete their studies. Accessibility is a real problem. I have just graduated from NM in January 2015. The rooms are upstairs and there are no ramps. I studied there with two paralytics. There was no way they could get their mobility devices with them. They had to leave their tricycles and crawl up the stairs to their classrooms. We talked to the school administration, but... The government's efforts are deemed insufficient for many disabled who believe that too often the government overlooks disability issues. Among them is one of the only disabled journalists in the country. For Joël Aquele, the current minister is not giving proper assistance to disabled people. I went once to that ministry and I witnessed a handicapped person crawling in the mud and asking them for crutches. They asked him to go back home and make a written application, but the person was in front of them, so it's not like he was lying to them. I found that inhuman. Like other working disabled people, she struggles with the way people view her disability. My bosses don't like to send me to report on the ground. They don't tell you, but you can feel it from their face. When you go to editors' meetings, 
They just don't use you. They prefer when you stay in the office all day long. You have to force things. It's an ongoing battle. It's not easy to be accepted whether it's in your job or in your community. You have to impose yourself. And I always impose myself. The idea of a proper minister for disabilities is popular among the disabled community. And it's maybe because in the past such ministry had good results. Jean de Dieu Goma is the president of the main association of disabled people in Congo. He is the one who created the law on disability in 1992. At that time, he was the minister for disability for 18 months before the civil war hit the country. When a ministry is in charge of social affairs and of disability issues, usually disability issues are left aside. If you look at the United Nations Convention on Disability Rights, it says that in all countries, people with disabilities should have a voice in matters that regard them. So I say yes to a ministry solely in charge of disability issues, because that minister would only care for people with disabilities. He points out the small number of wheelchairs and tricycles given by the Ministry of Social Affairs. I think you have noticed that some physical disabled still crawl on the streets, and I think such things should no longer exist. Every 3rd December on Disability Day, the government gives 100 tricycles. The thousands of other disabled have to wait another year, or buy them at £260. A fortune in a country where the average salary is £75 a month. With limited aid available, people with disabilities often have to fend for themselves. Many join local NGOs who try to put pressure on the state. But so far, the government has made no step to address the challenges they face. Barbara Lundu, City News International.